Good afternoon. Uh, really excited to be here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about food waste. Food waste, and just uh, before I get started, uh, the background, uh, that food waste title is stenciled on the side of a uh, dumpster outside of Petco Field in San Diego. I was wandering around at a conference, and there were 16 of those bins sitting outside that uh, stenciled with food waste. Food waste is something that in many cases we take for granted. We don't think about how much we're throwing out and, and is becoming, as we heard this morning with organic streams, is becoming something that we're more and more thinking about. And I'd like to share a little bit about uh, 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 this work uh, that I'm doing with Dr. Kate Perzo at the university, where we are trying to get a better understanding of What's there? We've heard these big numbers, uh, Martin Gooch's work. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a bad back, I can't. <laughs> and I'm a bit of a wanderer too, so I'll be happy if I, can, uh, if I can have a bit of freedom. So we've heard the estimates, $31 billion worth of food is wasted annually. Uh, that frankly is a swag, scientific wild ass guess. We really, we really have, no idea how much food we're throwing out. And in order for us to do an effective job of saying, can we reduce the amount of food we're throwing out, we need to have a better understanding of what we're throwing out. We need to have a better understanding. Am I? Okay. We need a better understanding of what we're throwing out and more importantly, why we're throwing it out. And so our work is really trying to say not only what is coming out of the household, but how do those households that generate different volumes of waste differ between each other? So can we understand behaviors that contribute to waste? And the next step in that process is, can we come up with interventions that reduce how much people are throwing it out? So I know most people in this room are really focused on what do we do once it gets to the curb? Uh, our priority is to try and never get it to the curb. And and as I said, there's not a really good detailed understanding of that. Uh, and municipalities have been great partners. And one of the charges we had today is to say, where are there opportunities for, for working together? Where are there opportunities for research collaborations? And, and we've had uh, Metro Vancouver, the City of Guelph, York Region, and City of Toronto have all participated in, in different research projects. We've been lucky enough to partner with Virginia from, from uh, U of T and build these sort of collaborations. I come at this from a slightly different perspective. Uh, I'm an economist and I'm inter interested in how people think about food and in food demand and in, and in behaviors. And so I think the other thing we really need to think more uh, comprehensively about is what kind of multidisciplinary teams we're bringing together to get to some of these problems. And I know there was a question, we also need to think of them, frankly, beyond just the individual waste streams. There was the question this morning, if packaging volume is related to food waste volume, and the answer is yes. Uh, households that generate larger volumes of food packaging have a, have a tendency to generate less food waste. And that makes sense. Uh, processed food is... Uh, in, in bite-sized chunks, uh, portion controlled. The other thing we need to think about is we need to think about the entire value chain because in many cases, some of the waste associated with that food preparation will have happened further up the value chain and is not measured at the household level. So these are complex problems, but there are lots of opportunities for us to learn more. I came to the food waste uh, in, in conjunction with Kate really uh, because I started looking at it from a restaurant waste perspective, how much, rest, how much food restaurants are, are throwing out. And over 10% of the food that's served in restaurants comes back on the plate and is thrown out. And we need to understand that, that there's lots of opportunities. So, the, in, the, the problem with food waste is we have these diverse, diverging interests and objectives. We have some people who are saying we want to reduce, we have some people saying we want to get it well sorted. Frankly, I've sat at some meetings and had a person from agriculture stand up in the back and say, we don't want to reduce waste. 
it would mean we have less people buying our products. And, and we have to recognize that we have these conflicting objectives and interests as we come up with strategies to hopefully reduce it. I, I think I talked a little bit already about quantifying what is being wasted and why. Will interventions work? Can we do things? Um, can we increase awareness? Can we undertake, I know York Region has got a, a bunch of food skills training and, and, and communications that they're working on and they're trying to measure whether that's decreasing the amount that's ending up in the green bin and really thinking about different stages of the value chain. So what are we doing at the University of Guelph? Well, our focus primarily until now has been residential food waste. We're looking at audits where we are auditing individual households. I know many of the... Auditing is tough, it's not very much fun, and it's expensive. And so historically, a lot of the audits have been aggregated across multiple houses, which gives you an, a sense of what the average production is. What it doesn't give you a sense of is what's the variability of production. And the variability of production is unbelievable and it's not normally distributed, it's fairly uniformly distributed. And so we have some households that are generating almost no food waste, some households that are generating huge amount of food waste, and you lose that as you do aggregation. That's great if you're just trying to find volumes and figure out how to deal with those volumes, but if you're trying to understand how much is being generated so that you can uh, figure out how those houses differ, differ uh, that's more problematic, and we're trying to do them at the individual household levels. We're also trying to do surveys of those households. So we're not just taking a look at what's coming out of that household, we survey them to get attitudes and behaviors, shopping behaviors, how they think about waste, uh, do they compost, do they have special diets, um, a wide variety of, uh, of questions. Again, to try and understand why what are the attitudes and behaviors that are creating uh, different volumes of waste? What's in there? What contributes to that variability? What is avoidable? And, and does approach affect volume? We're also doing some work on food service. Uh, food service is uh, often underappreciated in the food business. It's, it's harder to understand, but it's becoming increasingly important. 35 to 40 percent of the food dollar in Canada is spent outside the home, and that number is increasing. Uh, in the U.S., in 2015, 50 percent of the food dollar was spent on food prepared outside the home. Now we get into the data issues. We've got uh, some of that food prepared outside of the home is still consumed inside the home, uh, but we are seeing more and more food prepared and consumed outside of the home, and we need to understand that as well, and, and we're working on that. So I'm going to take uh, a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about some numbers. Uh, a, because uh, I am also a data geek, uh, and B, because I think, uh, I, I thought a lot of people in this room would like to, to, to see sort of some food waste volumes. This is our most, these are our most recent audits in the city of Guelph. We've done audits for a couple of years in the city of Guelph. We've done audits in some other places, but these are the, are the most recent ones. So uh, this was done in the summer of 2015. And, and so the first number is just simply the total weight put out. Uh, 8.72 kilos per week in the green bin. By far the greatest, that's not all food. But that's, that's organic, it's not all organics either because there's some contamination in the green bin. But, but you'll see the green bin is the heavy one and the green bin is picked up every week in the city of Guelph. Garbage and, and recycling are picked up in opposite weeks. If you look at this graph, that is the green bin weight by household for a given uh, for two weeks, I believe. Right? There's no clustering. If that was m flatter in the middle, you'd, you'd, you'd say it looks like more like a normal distribution. It just goes from almost nothing. That, that highlights a couple of things. Data matters, and we need a ton of data uh, because there is so much variability between households, 
between weeks, between seasons, and it's really hard with small samples to, to, to really get a good idea at the individual household level. Of that almost nine kilos, over five kilos per week was food. So people are throwing out just in their green bin, that's not the total. Now this number is a little bit higher than the number we got the year before for a variety of reasons. We think there are some demographic differences between the households. Uh, there'll be, a, I think it also, there's some sampling error. You, the, the, the variability is just so high that you need to get a big enough sample to get a good sense. But you see that goes from a high of 13.64 and a medium value of, of, of 4.62. So we're throwing out a ton of food. Recycling, 95% of households were putting out recycling, an average of about 2.2 kilos every two weeks, because that's only every two weeks. Recycling by its nature tends to be lighter. Um, again, we saw some people with 15 and a half kilos of recycling in a given week, and maybe that's some of those high newspaper users we, we heard about this morning. Um, And, and a lot of that is also contamination. Uh, we were surprised at the rates of contamination. They looked like they're higher they were in, than they were in previous years when we looked at bags. Uh, I think that uh, the bins actually appear to have increased the amount of contamination because they're not refusing. They used to refuse to take a bag if there was contamination. Now they don't see the contamination until it's dumped in the truck. There's half a kilo of food waste per cycle in recycling. So even in the recycling, uh, we are seeing uh, food waste in there. 21% of the food waste total, we saw as much as 9.58. What we really saw to a significant degree is that some households are using the green bin, uh, sorry, the blue bin uh, and uh, the gray bin, the garbage bin interchangeably. They say it's only getting picked up every second week. On a garbage week, I'm putting my recycling in the garbage can. And on a recycling week, I'm putting the stuff that might smell in my blue bin. And, and on, on the food side, we're also seeing some of that, that go in there. 43% of the households had some foods in the, had at least some food in the recycling stream. Now, the most common thing was, uh, a, a package that had some food left in it uh, was the most common. We also saw a lot of those, uh, uh, those single-use coffee pods in there where people said the packaging is, is, is recyclable, so I'm going to throw it in there and, and didn't do the separation. On the garbage side, uh, again, significant variation, but an average of four and three-quarter kilos every two weeks. Um, 1.8 kilos of contamination, so there was often recycling in there, and 1.65 kilos of non-food organics. Oh, did I have the food waste number in there? I didn't. There was much more food waste in the, uh, in the garbage stream than there was in the recycling stream. And what's interesting is the food waste in the garbage stream was much more likely to be avoidable food waste than the food waste uh, that, than, than, than unavoidable. So it was usually stuff that had gotten either really yucky and they didn't want to do anything with it, and so it just went into garbage. As an example, as anyone has ever seen what happens to an English cucumber in a bag, if it stays in the fridge too long, uh, it becomes particularly unpleasant to separate, and so the separation doesn't happen, it just goes into the garbage. But what was also interesting is that people seemed to hide stuff in the garbage that might be embarrassing. So we found whole roasts wrapped in plastic still, never opened, in the garbage, because people don't want to be seen as being wasteful. Just like you'd find batteries hidden in a Pringles container, because they knew they weren't supposed to put it in there, you would find food hidden, wrapped in something else, stuff that they figured, oh, well, I just shouldn't be throwing this out. The, unavoidable, the, the avoidable stuff was much more likely to be in the green bin. 
I'm going to skip this one in the interest of time. We also, in our audits, take a look at specifically what is that food waste in there. And in this audit, uh, more than 60, six, two thirds of the, uh, of the food that was in there, this is a summer audit, was fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, the year before that number, our total, this, our total uh, last, the year before last, was a little lower in terms of total food waste, and in fact, in that case, the food, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables was also a little lower, but it was still about 55%. So the, the largest portion of what we throw out is fresh fruits and vegetables. The first thing people say to me is, well, we're told to eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, we buy fresh fruits and vegetables, and uh, it's the cost of doing business. We have to buy it, some of it's going to go bad, and if we don't buy it, don't eat it, we don't be healthy, and, and we won't throw it up. What's interesting, though, is that there's not a strong correlation, in fact, there is no correlation between avoidable and unavoidable waste. So that some people buy fruits and vegetables, eat them, and throw out the unavoidable part, the apple cores and things like that, and some people buy fruits and vegetables, and then throw them out. And I'm convinced some people think, well, just buying them, I get the halo health effects. If I buy them and report that I've bought them, I get the health impacts. So some people, it, it isn't necessarily true that just buying fresh fruits and vegetables generates waste. We can avoid them. I'm going to, in the interest of time, keep things moving. We're in the process of analyzing the data, but we've identified two groups or two, these aren't distinct, they're not mutually exclusive, two groups of people who throw out less food. And the first is our groups that we call the waste aware. People who care about how much they throw out, they throw out less of everything. They don't just throw out less food waste, they, ha they create less garbage, they tend to create less recycling, they are just conscious about how much they're throwing out. They, they, they have more, they have fewer ways of evaluating when food is waste. We ask people, how do you decide when something's wasted, or when something is ready to be thrown out? The more criteria someone has, the more likely they are to throw it out. So the waste aware have fewer of them. They're worried about waste, they feel guilty about waste, they find it convenient to deal with waste, so they produce less of it. The other group, and these aren't mutually exclusive, is, are, are what we call the food aware. They're much more connected to food, they're conscious of food, they think about food, they plan when they're going grocery shopping, they often have a special diet, they often have a garden, they read nutrition labels, they just think about food more, they probably have better uh, food skills, food literacy skills, so that, that if something, if an apple isn't quite as good as it was and they bought it for fresh eating, maybe they can put it into a pie or a crumble, they produce less waste. So there are things we can do to, to reduce the amount of food people are throwing out. So, we're starting to understand food waste better. We have a long way to go. I think that there's real need not to just quantify how much food we're throwing out, but to understand why we're throwing it out. I think there's a real need to think beyond food waste and think about the relationships between all of the stream, and there's lots that still needs to, do, to be done. Uh, some shameless self-promotion. If you have questions, I'm happy if you send me an email. That's my email address. Uh, our, our food waste project has a blog, and that's our blog address. And, and uh, I also tweet often about food waste, and that's my, uh, uh, my Twitter handle. So thank you very much for your time.